Hey there everyone, today we're going to learn how to texture a 3D model in Lens Studio. Let's get started. Hey there everyone, today we're going to go ahead and continue on in our series of the Maker series and keep looking into Lens Studio. Today we'll continue with what we were doing previously in Lens Studio by going past just importing a 3D model and importing textures and or creating our own textures within the program of Lens Studio. So specifically today we'll be working with a new window that we haven't used here just yet called the Material Editor. The Material Editor will allow for us to control the materials that are used on top of the 3D models. Now, the material is kind of like a code word for what will be displayed and what uh, the 3D model will display and or render in our view, depending on factors like lighting, textures, uh, bump maps, all these things that contribute to the texture and look of what the 3D model will ultimately look like. So today we'll specifically focus on the process of getting a texture set up as well as best practices, common practices for textures, as well as how to just make your own textures within the uh, studio of Lens Studio. Let's get going. Now for our uh, setup today, there will be two primary or two necessary items. One we'll need to have a, a 3D object within our scene. So if you followed along with the previous video, you'll know how to import an, uh, uh, an FBX or an OBJ pro, uh, file. And with those, you'll be able to import a 3D model directly into the program. However, alongside that, a texture might be tied to your 3D model as well. That was the case for this 3D model, but to show someone who might not have one, we'll go ahead and set things up just so that we can work from a blank slate. So to get started, what we'll go ahead and do is come over here to our uh, Windows tab and or the uh, views that we have available. And for today's setup, all we have to do is open up the material editor. And instead of flipping between our scene and our material, material editor, what we'll do is go ahead and move it down here to where our logger is since we won't be utilizing the logger too, too often. Then what we'll do is maximize, well not fully maximize, but stretch out the uh, view of our material, material editor just a bit so that we have more context as to what we'll be working with today. With that, we're set up for today and we'll go ahead and get started. So to begin in our process of adding a material and or texture, I should begin with the terminology of shader. The shader is what allows our program and or Lens Studio to identify different features about the essentially skin of our 3D object. So what we'll be doing is, uh, and again, introducing the terminology of shader, uh, really all it is is how the light reflects off of something, how the colors look off of it, how it glows, how it doesn't glow, how it uh, attracts light, how it diffuses light really all these fancy terms uh, that you may have to become familiar with as you move into the world of 3D. However, if that you're just here to play around with these objects, let's go ahead and jump into how to get a, uh, a texture started. And in order to do so, we have to come over here to our resources tab, our panel, and here we'll go ahead and maybe we can even go directly into the texture. And what we'll specifically be looking for here is the materials. And within the materials, we'll go ahead and start off with an empty graph. A graph empty is a great starting point to go ahead and begin with our first shader. Blank slate, we only have a couple of things to modify in this instance. Before moving any further, I'd like to point out what we have available to modify in the shader. And I'd also like to introduce a bit of what we're looking at with this interface. So to begin, just to break down what we're looking at already is a block and essentially a code block at that that has a couple of inputs that will eventually 
be processed and which will be able to place as an output and directly place into a scene. So here we can control of a couple of things directly through these properties. However, we can also bring pr properties in from other code blocks and or sources in order to have them uh, modify in the spot and or make changes depending on a script. But here we can clearly see a RGBA allowing for us to control the RGB or the colors of the uh, shader that we'll be making as well as the A or the alpha channel meaning the uh, transparency and the non-transparency of the texture and or shader. Really how much light can pass through it. So with that we also have the world position the positioning of the texture dependent on some axis in the world scene a uh, world normal and a world tangent again all positioning based all things that de determine how the texture slides around the 3d model that it's on so with that i'll go ahead and explain what we're looking at with the material editor really what the material editor is is a form of visual programming now i mean that in the sense that uh, you're programming and through the means of visual interfaces code blocks that you can drag and pull and modify in terms of variables and or different inputs unlike uh, uh, just pure programming where you're typing out the inputs you're creating these constructs off the top of your head and directly programming them in to your program rather than interacting with an interface and uh, plugging uh, plugging in and pulling out where uh, things are necessary. So with that, this may actually be a great introduction to programming if you're new to it. If not, this is a great, if you have a background in programming, this might help you with better understanding logic because of the visual aspects that are tied down to it. So with that, let's go ahead and actually plug a texture into our shader. Before plugging in texture directly in, why don't we go ahead and apply this texture to our uh, our little guy or our business boy in this case. So what I'll go ahead and do is select the 3D model that I'm going to do and I'm just going to choose the main body in my model for the time being. Let me go ahead and zoom in a bit. Oh man, not sure what's happening here, but uh, we have a better view there. And alongside this, I'll go ahead and come over to this tab, search through my materials, and then find my graph empty. Here, I'll be able to go ahead and directly select it. And like that, before we make any changes, we have our texture applied to our 3D model. To get started with adding a texture to our shader, what we'll do is actually take a step back to a more primitive version of a texture in order to just understand the concept. So, a more primitive uh, form of a texture would simply be a flat color. And in order to get a flat color within Lens Studio, what we'll do, and specifically within the material editor, is come here and type in parameter. With this parameter, we'll go ahead and choose a color parameter. And here we'll see our first example of the visual programming. Here I have a value that I will literally plug in by clicking on this node end and dragging over to the uh, accepting node end over in our shader. Here we'll have co uh, direct control over our uh, color and or the uh, texture of our 3D model. And if you have the op empty graph selected, the graph empty I should say, we see that now inside of our spec inspector panel we have a direct input to modify the RGBA of our 3D model. So, like so, uh, we can go ahead and modify the color we would like our model to be. And with this, we can go ahead and let's make sure we have the correct material selected. We'll see that our texture and or shader has applied to our 3D model. You'll also, however, notice that the shadows are missing. And that is actually something we'll touch on in another episode. However, with this, we can go ahead and modify the colors of a 3D model in a very simple form. From here, let's, we'll move on to textures in specific. Now, as our final step to get a texture plugged in, 
what we'll do is actually remove our color parameter and replace it with what will be a texture parameter and specifically a texture 2D in this case. Here, just like last time, we'll plug it in and then reselect our graph empty. From here, we can go ahead and import an image and here you'll actually see an example of a flat texture and that's actually common in the world of 3D. So with these, you can go ahead and open up a uh, just a diffusion map or something, some simple image. Here you'll have some uh, basic textures to go ahead and work with. And with these, you'll see that we can apply a texture and or image directly onto our 3D model. Now, to, in order to get a 3D model and a texture to work together correctly, is a completely different subject and completely different video that we'll have to dive into as well. But with that today, we've learned how to apply texture and color to a 3D model. And until next time, have a nice week.